the woman at the desk said she thought it was very nice that ordinary people got recognised. Even if I don't recognise you. Even if I didn't recognise you. You can't get more ordinary than us. <laughs> to the Queen of Hearts, she's the ace of sorrow. He's here today and he's gone tomorrow. Can I go back and have some porridge, please? No. He's a bit, you're nervous, aren't you? Yeah, he is. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very good for the music, too. Well, that's what I mean. I, I, I just think, I, I, I actually think <clears throat> that what's nice about it is that somebody's noticed that something has been happening for the last 38 years, or 40 years, or more. <laughs> People have Somebody been saying, look, here are, here are our traditions. Here is our, our music, our culture. And for to seek young William Taylor, for a soldier she would go. The more I heard of it, the more curious I got. And that sort of, what is this thing? What's this What's thing, this called, thing love? called, love? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. This is right. traditional music. I was fell in play of the good and true, some nutmeg and ginger is the best we can brew. Will you be seeing the Queen today? Oh, that's exciting. There are already about three songs on the scene, you know, about it. Oh, is it really? Yeah, and one to the tune of... Uh, one to the tune of Let It Be. Let It Be. <laughs> and it start, starts up something like, I walk up to the sound of corgis. I wake up to the sound of corgis, I hear Philip asking me, Who's, who's this Martin Carthy MBE? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, it's all shiny. An extra thing to polish at Christmas. Oh, goody. <laughs> oh, dear. Be merry old, be merry old, with holly dress the festival. Prepare the song, the feast, the ball To welcome Merry Christmas And all remember gentles gay For you who bask in fortune's array The year is all a holiday The poor have only <laughs> the thing that made it extraordinary was that the music of Lead Belly or Woody Guthrie or someone like that has transported me back to the English countryside. We were all curious about this music because it was new to us and fascinating and foreign and exotic and it was ours. My mother came from Liverpool, Manchester area. She was living in the East End of London, that's how she met my dad. And my dad came from Limehouse. He was the scholarship boy. It was a really big thing for a working class family in the East End of London. The school I was at provided choristers for Queen's Chapel of the Savoy. So I went along and did it, till I stopped being a boy soprano. He used to sneak out, when he was, I think when he was about 15, and uh, borrow his dad's guitar to the coffee bars, where in those days people sat and drank coffee and played guitars and, you know, whatever. It was, you know, it was the Bohemians. <laughs> Our school skiffle group was pretty unofficial. 
Um, I'm not sure how many times we actually played together. I think we did Worried Man Blues a couple of times. I remember getting a bollocking from the headmaster because I was playing when I should be doing my homework. I failed my A-levels really badly. Ultimately, I was much more interested in music. I was much more interested in the guitar. First song I learned was uh, probably Heartbreak Hotel. Oh, since my lover left me, found a new place to dwell. It's down at the end of Lonely Street at Heartbreak Hotel, where you can be, where you can be lonely, darling. Where you can be lonely, where you could be lonely, you could die. Although it's always crowded, still you can find some room for broken hearted lovers to crowd there in the gloom. One of the first records I bought was Negro Folk Songs and Tunes by Elizabeth Cotton, Freight Train. Freight Train, Freight Train, run so fast. Freight Train, Freight Train, run so fast. Please don't tell what train. I sat with that record and I just, I learned everything on it. road to Damascus came on seeing Sam Lana. Um, and, uh, and when you listen to Sam Lana, you can see why. I mean, he's such a, a, an amazing singer. Martin saw him when he was very young, he was 17. And can you imagine that nowadays a 17-year-old seeing an old, see you know an old fisherman, of what nearly 80, and sat there singing and it changing your life? Well, it certainly did, Martin. It changed his life. Indra Martin, that's it. That's a good song. That is, and that was a true, and that's one of the oldest, oldest old folk songs there is in history. That one is, Indra Martin. And I sat there while he sang this song which has the weirdest tune. I mean, it's got a, and now I think of it as a, as, as a beautiful tune. But at the time, I remember thinking, what's all ever changed that? That's crackers. How dare you to venture so nigh, for I have turned Robin all on the soul sea to maintain my Two brothers and... And when I walked away from that, I was actually singing the tune to myself, saying, and saying at the same time, without seeing the, the funny side of it, how can a person remember a tune like that? That's not a tune. Nobody can sing a tune like that. So he went home and, and he's been trying to do it ever since. <laughs> from that moment on, I was going to be... A, I was going to sing folk music. Ain't no doubt about it. It would be a fair old time to come to an English repertoire, which is the implication of what I'd thought when I heard Sam. But it took me even longer to actually take the lessons really to heart. I am drowned in the lowland sea, she said. Lowland. Green weeds are all 
my bed. The songs have got all that drama stitched into the fabric of things. It's all there. And it doesn't need, uh, it doesn't need that kind of a setting. The plainer the better. It's well played and well sung, but nah, it's dumb. <laughs> young. Pun? Young. It's young. It's just young and dumb. You know, I lost count of the amount of times that people have come up to me and go, oh, I saw your dad in 1962 and I've never forgotten it. <laughs> there was such a proliferation of things like folk clubs at that time and everyone was so excited about it. We had been running our club in Hull, um, my brother and sister and our John and myself, since the late 50s. We sent away to an agent uh, in London, because we didn't know anything about what you did, and we just said, please send us a folk concert. <laughs> and they sent Steve Bembo and uh, Red Sullivan and Martin Carthy. And that was the first time I'd ever heard him. Are you going to Scarborough? Fair? Most guitarists that um, I'd seen perform before then did either stuff like bluegrass stuff or, or American stuff. Remember me too. Martin came and we met just before the concert. I had no idea what he was going to sing and he got up and sang Scarborough Fair and things like that. I thought, hey, this is good. This is English stuff. <laughs> this is good. And that was the first time uh, I'd, I'd sort of heard anybody do anything like that, and it was wonderful. And um, I'm sure everybody from that audience that played guitars went home and tried to play like him. <laughs> Fell in love at first sight, and she says she did too. And she was married, and I wasn't. God bless and marry Moses. And all Troubadour was like a, um, oh, it was like a holy place, you know, like a lost land. You have to go and find it. And I remember deciding I must go there, must go there. But then one day, on the spur of the moment, I decided to go down. I heard the sound of bagpipes as I went in. Oh, what the hell is that? And it was like watching a man wrestling an octopus. And it was Seamus Ennis. People who came to London just came down here. It was the late Saturday night gig. It always started half past 10, 11 o'clock. Wow. Good heavens. That's where it was. Sit drinking used to go on in there. But that was a trademark, that thing. And the stage probably come up to about here. And people used to, a few people would sit, sit along the wall there, and then people all in front of you and there. I was resident down there for oh, a couple of years, I would think. And uh, Waterson's played here. Bob Dylan played here, obviously. This Spanish-American 
war's had its day And the Civil War too was soon laid away And the names of the heroes I was made to memorize With guns in their hands and God on their side When he sang at the Troubadour, he blew people away. And he was, sing Scarborough Fair. So I used to sing Scarborough Fair or Lord Franklin, because those are those the two he liked. I always, it's funny, because people always ask me, they said, did you ever play with Bob Dylan? And I always used to say no. <clears throat> and I was doing an interview with some, some Bob Dylan freaks. And they said, <clears throat> did I ever play? And I said, no. And they said, yes, you did. And they came up with a photograph. And I'm standing at the back. I'm not surprised that I don't remember, because there was an awful lot of smoky stuff going around that night. <laughs> Poor. I first met Dave down here. I didn't know who he was. <laughs> We became good mates, Swarb and I. He was exactly the person I needed to meet at that time. Talk about serendipity, because he really did bring me out of my shell. He's done it twice now, brought me out of my shell as a player in, in the 60s, and, um, and did the same again when we started playing together in the sort of 89 through the 90s. Um, he's... he's uh, He's great at leading by example, if you want to follow. That's his whole, whole thing. He just looks at you and he says, be brave. So they, so they, all on a day, she dressed herself in man's array with a sword and a pistol all by your side to meet a true love to meet a true love the way did ride as she was riding over the plain she met the true love and bid him stand your gold and the silver kind sir she said or else this moment or else this moment your life i'll have and when she robbed him of his store, she said, kind sir, there is one thing more. A gold and a ring, which I know you have. Deliver it, deliver it, your sweet life to save. All that golden ring, a token is my life I'll lose. The ring I'll save, being tender hearted, just like a dove. She rode away, she rode away from her true love. All next morning in the garden green just like true love years they were seen always fight his watch hanging by her clothes which made him blush made him blush like any rose oh what makes you blush at a so silly a thing i thought to have at your golden ring it was i that robbed you all on the plain so is your watch is your watch and your gold again i did intend and it was to know it if that you work me true love or no but if you would give me that ring she said i'd have pulled the trigger i'd have pulled the trigger and i'd shot you dead the thing that's remarkable about dave and me and the thing that makes it really interesting and the thing that makes it so very easy for us to pick up the threads is that we rarely arranged anything. I got this phone call one day for him to go along and play with Fairport and he said um, he wants me to go and play with this rock and roll group and I said yeah. He said oh, I want to do it. I said why not? He said you know me. He said I hate bloody rock and roll. A couple of days later when he'd done the session I said, what was it like? He said, it's amazing. It's amazing, Dad. He said, it's amazing. I've never... He said, I don't, I, I don't want you to misunderstand this, but 
I mean, they've asked me to join. And I said, fantastic. Are you going to do it? He said, well, he said, I just played with this guy, this guy Richard. And I feel like I want to play with him for the rest of my life. I said, is that good? And he said, oh, yeah. He said, he's fantastic. I said, well, do it. He said, yeah, what are you going to do? I said, it's none of your business. <laughs> nothing wrong with the, with the with electric instruments themselves they can do the job perfectly well in many ways they can do it better because the one thing playing electric instruments taught me was to play less and uh, that was a bonus I began to understand about momentum <laughs> that was different about that and what had been going on in the folk clubs before was that suddenly all the musicians who were involved in it had obligations and folkies aren't used to that sort of thing from Farnham in Surrey dear Jim please would it be possible for you to fix it for us to meet Steel Ice Band <laughs> what followed on from that was some kind of artificial profile um, and I think and in, in those circumstances it's very very easy to lose sight of the prize and you become more more self orientated um, and that's not what traditional song is about it really isn't it's us it's not me it's us it paid a packet to patch out an empire. Drake bowled the Spaniards out first ball. Just want to lie in the sun by the water, down where the rushes grow tall. Red the lines of Wellington's army white, the ensign where Nelson held sway. Crimson the cow was always very political. You took it for granted. It wasn't such a big deal because the folk scene was a political animal. It was CND and it was the anti-apartheid movement and they were, they were engines of the folk revival. Um, the idea that anybody could be, could be not political at that time was, was laughable. There was times in his life when he could have stayed, you know, in folk rock bands and things. But he always believed that the folk clubs were important, where the folk scene was having a very, very bad time. I mean, he stuck to it, you know. He stuck to the folk clubs. He, we used to get letters from and telephone calls from folk club organisers saying, look, you know, Martin, we're having a bad time. Can you come and do us a gig? And he would go sometimes for train fares and sometimes he wouldn't even take that and he has always said that the clubs are the backbone of it he likes the immediacy you know of people sat in front of him Hello. all you've got to do is deliver a song from there to the person's ear there that's all you, that's all you've got to do and everything else is nonsense. It's very simple. It's very simple. These are great stories. They make you laugh. They make you quake in your boots. They, you know, make you fear to walk outside the door. They make you close your windows and doors at night. Um, they make you behave. I allow the song to do its job, the job that it's done for several hundred years, 
and when I'm properly a conduit for the song, the gap between the audience and me disappears. You're actually trying to wake the beast and let the beast appear in the middle. And that's what makes a song work. They filled her heart with much grief and woe And for to seek young William Taylor For a soldier she would go And she dressed herself in man's apparel Man's apparel she's put on and for to seek young William Taylor for a soldier she and strong. One day as she were exercising, exercising one, two, three, a silver chain on down her waistcoat and exposed her lily white breast. Cecil Sharp believed, as he put it, that you got a better sense of the tune if you wrote it down. The trouble is, when you actually write a tune down like that, what you're doing, truthfully, is killing it stone dead, or you're, you're endangering its life. It's quite hard to see a tune on a piece of paper and then imagine how it goes, because that gives you just a shorthand. It's, it's, a, it's a clue. The sound library is still upstairs. Within that stuff, this is just gold. I get pretty on fire about hearing a recording made in 1908. I will sing you a song and the very pretty one concerning creeping Jane. Joseph Taylor was, to some, the jewel in the crown. It was the strangest and it was the most thrilling thing I think I'd ever heard at the time. I couldn't believe that this was an English singer. Why she never saw a man or a gelding in the night That she rallied to the water that was in all the day The Watersons used to, <laughs> used to use Cecil Sharp House like a lighthouse. If they ever had a gig in London, it was the Doncaster Bypass and Cecil Sharp House. And all they had to say concerning little Jane you would find a traditional singer singing a traditional song, and it might be three verses, and so you'd start looking for other versions, uh, and then you'd start looking for other tunes, and you do rebuilds, you know, you you make a whole song. I mean, that that that, that is Martin's has rebuilt wonderful big balance out of nothing, you know. I think that is his greatest triumph, you know, snatches here and snatches there and, and built the most wonderful, mind-boggling songs out of them. And uh, it's what, I think it's what he's best at, but you've got to have been doing it all your life. When people like us, you know, uh, touch folk music, we have to treat it like, you know, this is a Kohenua and we must not drop it. I'm going to put it on the table and then if you're very good, you can pick it up, but only if you're very, very good. Don't dirty it. You know, that's not, that's not, what, a, that's not what the songs are. And as soon as, you, as soon as you get out of that and accept that a, a, a substantial part of tradition is getting your hands dirty, is actually falling flat on your face, is actually making mistakes, is actually being dangerous. It's not... It's, it's dangerous, it's not fragile. This idea that this thing is a fragile beast which can, where, 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 you know, which, which can be destroyed by you is nonsense because the one thing the one thing that tradition that, that, that songs or traditional music loves is to be done there's n you cannot you cannot i say it again <laughs> you cannot do anything you cannot do anything to damage traditional song or traditional music except not do it now when that they come to the third mile post creeping janey look blind and smart 
Toronto. And then she lifted up a little lily white hoof, and she feared past him all like a dark low the day de o the diddle all the day do. Then she lifted up a little lily white hoof, and she feared past him all like a dark low the day. Now creep it and Janey the races won, and she scarcely swept one trop. Oh, she's able for to gallop the ground all again, while the others is not able for to trot. Love the day, the o, the diddle or the day, do. She's able for to gallop the ground all again, while the others is not able for to trot. Love the day. I'd lived in the West Indies for four years and came back in February '72. And Lal and Mike said, you know, this is what we've been working on while you've been gone. <laughs> and one of the people who had been working on them, who had done arrangements for them, was Martin. And he was instrumental in, in organising the sessions, which impressed Bill Leader into, you know, making the Bright Fever set. LP as it was in those days. Today bright fever she smiled down on me for the very first time. For the very first time she smiled on me. Well it was a magic period because Norma had come back by then. All of a sudden we were all together again. During that week, we courted each other. Every night after the session, we sat and we talked and we talked and we talked and we talked and we talked. About everything and nothing. Love us talk. Martin said to me, is it about time we got married? I said, yes, all right. <laughs> and uh, that was it, really. <laughs> no hoo-ha, nothing like that. seemed a natural thing. <laughs> it's never, do you want to join the group? It just happens, it doesn't, you know, you join the family and, <laughs> and that's it. He got the tunes right, yes. <laughs> Martin's sight reading was a, a godsend. Yeah, I, uh, it, in a way, it changed us. It did change us. But, I think for the better. throughout all this town. Our carpet is white and our rail it is brown. And our walls fell in play of the good and true. Some nutmeg and ginger is the best we can brew. All the dogs. So my good neighbours, we shall drink unto you. Besides all on earth, we have apples in store. So please let us in for it, go by the door. For the doll, for the dolly doll, for the dolly doll, for the dolly dee. For the narrow, for the daddy, sing to the don't arrange them, we sing just them like right. a song and sing it the way we, we would have always sung together. We take a song around a lot and the key is usually established by these two. You know, having established that, it starts to sound right because he and I struggle around and try and find something to do. <laughs> the rehearsals are a pretty ramshackle affair. Tune, you sing a harmony. Yeah, if you can't reach the tune, you sing a harmony. Um, so, to, to that extent, it's arranged, but um, not, it's pretty not, loose. Nothing. You know, there's nothing it's down on the paper. Oh, the pretty holly bush, it drinks, it drinks. Oh, it breaks my heart full so slow. And if ever I get out of the pretty holly bush, I will never get in there anymore. Come, sack your 
Christ George. Come slack it for a while, for I think I see my brother coming over the yonder sky. And did you bring gold? And did you bring silver to set me free? What to save my body from the cold jail wall and my neck from the eye gallows tree? I know gold, and I know silver to set you free. For I have come for to see you hanging, hanging on the eye gallows tree. Oh, the prick of all the bullshit pricks, it pricks, oh, it pricks my heart full sore. And if ever I get out of the prick of all the bush, I will never get in there anymore. And in the main tent inside, we've got Martin Carthy, Britain's most revered, copied, famous, idolised folk singer since the mid-1960s. Brass Monkey is a band that's way more than the sum of its parts, because brass really kicks things along. <laughs> She led him through the kitchen and she led him through the hall And the servant said, the devil, as he come to block us all And you know we had a rum to my diddle, rum a diddle work a day She led him up the stairs to show him what to do And she fell on the feather bed and he fell on it too And you know he did a rum to my diddle, rum a diddle work a day <laughs> up the frying pan and she began to knock just to let the servants know my boys that he was out of work and you know he was rum to my diddle rum a diddle work a day put her hand into her pocket she pulled out 20 pound take this my jolly tinker and we'll have another round and you know we will rum to my diddle rum a diddle work a day You know, I know where my roots are, and everywhere I have come from has been traditional music. You know, I could, I could be a, a real traditional musician in that I learnt all my stuff from my parents, which I did. Eliza has always been um, an entire musician, from when she was 17 or 18 being on stage with us. She's always been complete. She's, always, she's never, um, never been tentative. She's always, she's always commanded what she did and gradually spread her net wider. There is a lack of ego and a lack of politics that you have when it comes to playing with your family. I mean, not even, not even, just, not even just the intuition that people talk about, not, not even just knowing what's going to happen next, but also having the, the confidence and the comfort to try anything. <laughs>
of Waterloo. 50,000 people died at that battle. Where's their memorial? <laughs> 50,000 stout-hearted, brave, brave mortals that died made an awful poor tune, and its many's the sad heart will remember with sorrow the 18th of June. I mean, it's all in the song, but nobody knows the song, except idiots like me. 60,000 stout-hearted brave mortals that fell made an awful poll tune. And it's many's the sad heart will remember with sorrow the 18th of June. The man who sang it is a man called Henry Burstow, who actually learned it from a man who fought at the Battle of Waterloo. So in two skips, there it is. There's another one. That fills me with rage. Such a trick that was pulled on people in 1982. Some of us would believe it was a conspiracy. Others would say it's just sheer incompetence. It fills me with rage. I feel much more, with, much more in sympathy with the ordinary people who don't get the memorial, because they, they're not represented here. Well, it has meaning for some people, but it doesn't for me. Except for Blake. Yeah. Blake and, and, uh, and Constable and people like that. You know, they're tellers of the truth. Uh, Canon Collins, look at that. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> Canon Collins Memorial ought to be right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> He was a remarkable man, and he got up a lot of people's noses. <laughs> Didn't he? Yeah. He did. He was one of the people on that second Aldermaston march yes. when I learned that song. Yeah. I remember seeing him up on the uh, on the dais at, uh, at, at Trafalgar Square at the end of the march. Down a throwaway you're reading Small power the world has and can afford us Not half so much privilege as the sword does It'll foster the master class to 
and disaster This will make a servant weekly greater than the master Ventures, enters, seeks and it centers Ever the upper hand, never a dissenter Says there'll be no argumentum Blood that is spilt, sir, has gained all the guilt, sir Thus have you seen me run my sword up to the hilt, sir don't know who they are. Most English people are unaware that they have given up their identity and were sold an idea of Britain. That the Tower of London is England, that Buckingham Palace is England, and the Yeoman of the Guard and the Changing of the Guard and all that tantara is England. Ain't no culture there. Ain't no continuity. What identifies me is music. I think what identifies English people is their music and their dance and their literature and their painting, their dancing, that stuff. Stuff that's more mobile than a pile of bricks. And there it is, that's the toaster. And we placed the golf balls, broke it, it, it basically built, built it breaking the ABM treaty like that. And now they're going to break it again to do that damn Star Wars, when they do it, which of course they will. And there's the police presence. <laughs> Filingdale's early warning station. It's a reminder of why we all started doing this in the first place. CND and the anti-apartheid movement that uh, was the engine of a lot of this, and a lot of people forgot. There were three men came out of the west, their fortune for to try. And these three men made a solemn vow, Barney Corn should die. They plowed, they sowed, they harrowed it, been thrown thorns upon his head. And these three men made a solemn vow, Head. Soon he amazed them all. They let him lie till long midsummer, till he looked both pale and worn. And little Sir John growed a long, long beard, so he became a man. The musicians I've liked have been dance musicians. And when I discovered Morris music and decided to play it on the guitar and found that I could, then everything became dance music for a while, which was uh, a bit of a pain because I became a metronome player, which is, uh, which is missing the point of dance music, actually. It's much more, uh, it's much subtler than that. It moves about a bit and you've really got to, got to be paying attention and taking Scan Tester's great advice. If you want to play, play for dancing. That's true with playing for Morris. Watch the feet all the time. Never take your eyes off the feet. I never forget the thrill I got the first time playing um, playing Old Time of Oxford for Bampton when um, I'd recorded it and Francis Shergold, who was squire at the time, came up and said, You recorded our tune. I said, Yeah, everybody well, better come and learn to play it properly. <laughs> Stuck me up in front of the dancers and got tossed in at the deep end.
she gone back to sleep. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it takes some dedication to get up on the beginning of January on a very, very cold day and uh, go and dance out on the moors for, for the whole of the day. It's about going back right to to your roots, about you know, about knowing uh, knowing who you are and where you've come from. Um, and having a good time. When we came up here, we went to Gothland every year. They said they wanted a musician and she went and played. They'd never had a woman musician and they weren't really sure about it. But she's, she's a great dance musician. The second, they, the second she started to play, they wanted to dance. They said, you're in. <clears throat> and uh, gave her a uniform and a hat and everything. And uh, she was in. I was 50 when we first started playing together as a family. To work as a trio with your wife and your daughter. I mean, I'd had telepathic situations with Dave, but it's a different thing. It's far more fundamental because it's far deeper and far more mysterious. It's the only word. It's really mysterious business. Working with this woman with whom I share some blood is... I can't explain to you how... I know where she's going and she knows where I'm going in a, in a tune that we've not played before, or the tune that we have played a million times. She'll suddenly slow something down. I'll just slow down. I'll speed up or add a bar. Whatever. That's what singing with your family is like, playing with your family, I mean. It's a marvellous, I mean, literally, a marvellous experience. Good word, marvellous. Sleep on the and sleep and take thy rest, lay down thy